I heard someone go, oh. That's... You should read the book. <laughs> Whoever that was, thank you. I'll give you a hug later. Um, but... <laughs> no, stop doing it. Stop doing it. Um, but, yeah, I think... I don't know whether... For a purely American audience, I, I assume, the air spare is probably something very new, but it is... Yeah, it, it is literally that. You have the air, and then you have the spare. You have the distraction. Um, and if you're not careful, you can really play into that, like some members of my family have. And I, and I fell for that trap when I was, you know, my teenage years, looking for my purpose and trying to work out what was going on. Your family m motto you say in here is uh, never complain, never explain? Yeah. Okay. But there's also another family motto, which is Dieu et mon droit, you know, God and my right. And those are two different things. One is to say, like, oh, don't care, don't explain. But yeah. the other is very forceful and say, almost like, pardon my expression, damn it, yeah. you cannot come for me because I have the right to this position mm -hmm. and, and, and the right to my actions. Um, do you see those two in conflict? Does your family really not explain and not complain? No, it, it, it literally is that. It's a motto. That's all it is. Um, for well over a decade, probably two decades, um, the, the motto itself is a, is a shield to be able to feed narratives, trading of information, personal information on family members to take one down, to build one up, and through unnamed sources uh, where there are no fingerprints left behind. So, again, one of the reasons what I wrote this book is I'm, every word in that book is mine. And I realize that... Especially what, do you, what, do you, what, what do you mean by that? because the amount of unnamed sources that have fed information to the British tabloids oh. about me and my wife and my family... You have a source, true and it's you. ...true and not true, I am the source of that book. And the difference is that instead of hiding behind, you know, um, unnamed sources, this here are my... These, these are my words from, from my lips, from my mouth. And I understand, especially for British people, that it can be incredibly jarring to have my name to a lot of these stories. It is also quite bizarre because a lot of these stories in this book have actually been told already. The thing that seems redolent when you read the book and you, and you hear your interviews, it, you, I get the sense that you're being honest when you speak. And being factually honest, as you say, these are all, you're, you're standing behind all of these stories, but also emotionally honest. And one of the things that was sort of emotionally very affecting to me, even as someone who, again, who doesn't follow the royal family that much, I always assumed after the death of your mother, the two of you, you and your brother, were lockstep. Yeah. You were these um, solaces for each other who went through this experience together and went through the really the rest of your lives shoulder to shoulder as the only two who could possibly understand what you'd gone through. But that is not the case. No, that's not here. the case. Are you surprised that people are surprised? Because people are surprised. Are you surprised? Because that has been the narrative. I mean, look, there's, a, there's two parts to this. One is, I think, anyone who suffers from trauma, shock, grief, loss, which we all have and all will, um, that you have got to put on a brave face. And I think, to a large extent, you know, me out there smiling, my brother out there smiling, mm -hmm. us doing working engagements together, it, it looks a certain way, mm -hmm. especially then when you have the British press, the Royal Rota, of which all of the royal family's information goes through that filter before it then goes global. That's like the press pool? Yeah, press pool, yeah. It's, uh, ex uh, exclusive access. Um, yeah. um, do you have to say it that way? <laughs> Legally, is it? do you have to say it that way? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. I, I signed a disclaimer before. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but for... Yeah, so I can understand why people would think that, but I guess more recently, especially in the last six years, it is all the, the, the fracture of the relationship between me and my brother <laughs> has, has, has very much been pinned on my wife, um, funnily enough. There's a lot of talk about the physical fight yeah. that the two of you had, where he pushed you down in the kitchen and, and broke the, the dog bowl when yeah. he fell on it. Um, it says it broke your necklace. Mm -hmm. What necklace was this that he broke? Uh, this one, which is now fixed and now it's got... And what's on there? What do we got there? We got um, my kids' heartbeats, which my wife gave me. Oh, like the cardiogram yeah. engraved there, yeah. yeah. And, and what's the central? And then a friend of mine in Botswana made this for me, which has got Tiger's eye in the middle. If your mother were still alive, do you ever think about how she might handle this moment? She, I mean, she... We uh, wouldn't have got to this moment. Talk to me about that. Well, we wouldn't have done. I don't know where, I don't know what... There was already crisis in your family, there was already divisions, there was already, she was already being hounded, mm -hmm. so... Um, 